Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and this time we've got the pleasure of watching The Lord of the 69 playing in the Emil 2, the brand new tier 9 Swedish auto-loading heavy tank. I hope you don't mind The Lord of the 69, I'm just going to be calling you Lord throughout this replay. Now this game is absolutely awesome for a variety of reasons that I'm going to get stuck into later on but it really showcases what the Emil 2 is all about. Now everybody knows that the brand new Swedish auto-loading heavy tanks, i.e. the Emil, the Emil 2 and the Kranvang specialize at having fantastic turret armor, 12 degrees of gun depression. But one thing that a lot of people don't really seem to like about the Emil, at least when they first get it, is it's, it feels rather sluggish. A lot of people think because it's quite small and it's got an autoloader that it's going to be reasonably fast. And we've kind of taken that for granted with a lot of the French autoloaders and even the American autoloaders when you think about the T-69 and also the T-54E1. They're not the slowest of tanks, right? But then again, those are medium vehicles. And when you look at the French tanks, the AMX 5100 and the AMX 5120, well, well, they're really fast as well. Now, the 5120 certainly doesn't have the armor that this tank has at the front, but we're going to be seeing that later on. So, for uh, what has happened to the Emil line when you've taken the step up from tier 8 uh, in the Emil to the Emil 2? Why is this tank better? Well, one of the great advantages that this tank has is that it now packs 120mm rather than 105mm that you used on the Emil, which had 320 alpha damage. So previously, you would be doing 1,280 damage per magazine. Now, with the 400 alpha damage per shot, without losing any of the shells in the magazine, you can deal 1,600 damage to your opponent. Although, one thing that should be mentioned is that this 120mm takes a little longer to unload. The Emil has 3 seconds delay between each of its 105mm shells. And this tank with its 120mm, a lot like the AMX 5120, or exactly like the AMX 5120, has 3.33 seconds delay between its shells, meaning that you're going to have to be continuously firing for 10 seconds after the first shot to be able to fully unload your magazine. So that's a whole second extra than the Emil. But when you've got that extra alpha damage, it kind of makes up for that difference. Other things that are much better about the Emil 2 uh, is the mobility. It's got a better top speed limit now up to 56 kilometers an hour. And also it does have a little bit more grunt in the engine, which is always awesome because the Emil 1 does feel very sluggish, even though it does have a, a lot of other good attributes. I'm in no way saying that the Emil 1 is a bad tank. Just talking about what the step up is between the vehicles. The aim time, as I mentioned, is, is a fantastic thing about this vehicle. It has gone from 3.2 seconds on the Emil down to 2.8. And so that allows you to just be so much more confident with quickly engaging. If you've tried out the Emil, you know that you're just waiting, 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 waiting. And sometimes you just have to take the chance rather than let the opportunity slip you by. And finally, and also, sorry, I should say, that the turret dispersion is better on the Emil 2. 25% better at that, which really adds up with the increased aim time and allows you to snap shots in like you would be more accustomed to on your on your auto loading vehicles. It's one thing that I'm still getting used to on the Emil is just realizing how long I have to sit there to be able to effectively engage my opponents at maximum accuracy. And unless you've got them as short to mid ranges, it's almost impossible to do so. But the tank does have its strengths, of course, the Emil like the Emil 2, has got absolutely fantastic armor, and the Emil 2 has more than the Emil. Now you're up to, how much is it? Is it 215 millimeters of frontal turret armor? And look how well it's angled. Nothing is going through this turret if you're using the gun depression. The gun depression? The gun depression that this tank has, hey? That's a combination of dispersion and depression, right? So, Lord has now found the side of a Yagtag 88. And this is just not very fair for this Yag Tiger. He does actually manage to put a round into Lord. Looks like he fires up into the lower plate of the tank. Yeah, we can see a shell right into the beak there. But he puts his third into the Yag Tiger 88 and finishes off the KV-5 as well, who looks like he wanted to try and take out the Panther 2 behind me. Now, Lord has showed some really good map awareness so far. You could see at the beginning of the game that he wanted to make his way out towards the west and then he saw that there was a lovely opportunity to devour the IS-3 platoon on the enemy team which he definitely took advantage of and then noticing that then the northern flank was going to fall he made it back to base to provide I guess the, the heavy tanks that his team needed to be able to deal with the 
the, the push from the enemy platoon 2 on, uh, on the enemy team there. So now the Emil 2 in its perfect environment, right? In this kind of a situation, there are very few better tanks in the game. Now, uh, Lord was exposing a little bit too much of his side armor there. You don't want to expose any more of your tank than you need to. We can see quite clearly that if he'd been back here, it'd be unlikely that the Panther II would have found the shot into the, the side armor of the Emil, which certainly isn't great. We're talking about 60 millimeters of side armor. And the, the Panther II on the enemy team with 200 millimeters of penetration easily able to go through that, even when it was reasonably angled. So the perfect situation for the Emil. You're using your... Uh, impenetrable turret armor if you're using your gun depression. You're using the fact that you've got time to be able to reload, which is certainly one of the weaknesses of the tank. This vehicle has less than 2,000 DPM. When we look at the AMX 5120, the AMX 5120 has 2,133 DPM. This vehicle takes a whole extra five seconds to reload than the AMX 5120 does, which means that you, you really want to make sure that you you have a barrier between you and your opponents. You want to have a little bit of a buffer zone, which will allow you to have that longer period to reload. But this this is just the kind of situation which more than makes up for it. Look at that. Right off the front plate, 560 damage blocked from the 128 millimeter tank destroyer gun, that the same one that's on the Yank Tiger that that Waffenträger Ralph Panzerfeer on the enemy team was using. Bounces him, and then from there on, just a couple of high rolls means that he even gets to save an extra round of ammunition, and every little counts with this tank. When you're on 5,400 damage, you've got a fair old amount of ammunition in this tank. You've got about 40 rounds, and that is enough to do, I guess, 16,000 damage potential if you roll average. Now, I like what Lord is doing here. He positioned the Type 59. I'm, I'm not sure if he wanted to... I, I guess he really wants to get into the fight here. He's pushing the Scorpion out of the way, but he's not really pushing the Scorpion into the line of fire. Now he manages to get forwards, and a good thing he manages to get forwards too. He really needs to get killing the opponents because there's a lot of tanks on the enemy team. Although one less now that he's taken out the Panther 2. Puts one into the Coppola of the Tiger 2, and oh gosh, he misses the next one. And it looks like it's actually the artillery that hits the Scorpion there, tracking him. And now Lord makes his way back into cover but he's making a real big mistake here can anyone see what he's doing he was reloading two apcr rounds oh gosh that was awkward i think he lost about 10 or 15 seconds there of his magazine reload now he finally notices it and he double taps his two key to load heat and this scorpion seems to be struggling to be able to reverse he puts a shot into the panther 88 misses it however and now lord is in a one versus five situation oh wait no he's not there's a Panther 2 over there on 35 hit points. That might be one of Lord's aces up his sleeve because that Panther 2 will be able to go and pressure the artillery or hopefully maybe, maybe even pressure the cap circle. There's quite a lot of health left on the enemy team here. He's going to have to put four rounds into the IS, four rounds into the Panther 88, and then he's going to have to have a round for the, the T-29 and the IS on the enemy team. But his heat rounds don't work against the spaced tracks of the Panther 88 with the shell being absorbed and every shot counts right now. He decides to finish off the Tiger 2 and the IS, is he going to be able to penetrate him? The Panther 88 hits him in the side of the turret by the looks of it. The IS hits the dead Scorpion and he ricochets another shell. But the Batchat 15555 narrowly misses Lord there and that would have been disastrous for him. But now he's up to 7,200 damage done and I guess he's just trying to hope that he can buy time by sitting on this slope. Really good stuff here. If he'd fallen all the way down, I'm pretty sure the IS would have been very happy to get into this comfortable position here and then shoot him as he made his way through the, the eastern part of this valley. By holding here, I, I'm not sure if the IS really knows what he's dealing with. Maybe he didn't realize that he's reloading here. So Lord goes around the corner. Oh gosh, 447 damage done, but uh, Lord puts in the first shell into the IS. He's going to have to connect the next three unless he high rolls them. There's his second, 419, will he finish him off? No, 403, but luckily he ricochets the IS. Or should I say, not luckily at all, because in that kind of a position, <laughs> nothing is going through the front of this turret. Just look at all of those ricochets off the turret. But an absolute disaster, because the Panther 2 on his team just got himself killed to the Bat Chat 15555. And so that means that he's now also going to have to avoid artillery while he reloads to hopefully interrupt the cap circle against the rather sensible T-29 and Panther 88 who decided to cap. 
but Lord in a very advantageous position here. Right above them, there's almost no chance those tanks are going to be able to go through the turret. And the biggest threat right now is the artillery. There you go, he ricochets the T-29, interrupts the cap on 100%. It could not have been any closer. Oh gosh, he puts one of his rounds into the Panther 88's turret, but luckily he has another one in reserve to be able to finish off the Tier 8 German medium tank. What a crazy result that was there. Oh my word, 9,408 damage, but he's not done yet. He's going to have to handle the Batch at 15558 on the enemy team as well. Can you believe the developments of this game? It had me on my edge of my seat when I was first watching it. The fact that there, there was a Panther 2 who looked like he was a very competent player who managed to, I guess, get outplayed by the artillery. Oh no, that's going to start a, a, a drama section in the comments down below. Um, but if he'd managed to kill that artillery, then there would have been so much less pressure off Lord. He would have had to worry about the artillery having the RNG to be able to hit him or not, or whether he'd simply been able to make a great shot into his tank. And also, if he'd been able to get into the cap circle, then Lord might have been able to play a little bit more defensively to be able to get the interrupt. But then again, I don't think he could play any more defensively, because every second counted, he did interrupt the cap circle on 100%. I think if it had been half a second longer, the enemies would have been able to cap out and Lord would have been having an absolute heartbreak. So, 3 minutes and 27 seconds left on this game and Lord is making his way to the enemy base. But as we can see, the Emil 2 doesn't really do very well through soft terrain. Its ground resistances are not particularly excellent, 2.3 to be exact, and the power to weight ratio is just over 14. But that suddenly is a lot better than it would have been on the Emil. The Emil would have been going much more slowly through this terrain, I can tell you, and it suddenly does feel like a, a true heavy tank when you need to take it off-road. So what is the Batch at 15555 thinking right now? Maybe he's sitting at the up the top of the slope expecting the Emil to come towards him. If I was the Batch at, I might be up here aiming down this alleyway if I had good view range with binoculars, um, just trying to find the initial glimpse on my opponent to be able to get that ambush shot off because the Emil isn't really going to be able to advance towards him uh, very quickly. Alternatively, the Batchak could be trying something really sneaky, maybe situating himself up towards the A2 area in the corner to be able to get a shot on Lord as he comes around the corner, but that kind of gives the game away, right? Uh, ga gives the game away a little bit, right, guys? The Batchat is inside the cap circle, and so that means Lord has to turn around and go all the way back. Will he be able to make it? Well, I guess it's irrelevant if he, if, he, if he makes it, he makes it. If he doesn't, he doesn't, because the enemy has enough time to be able to cap out this game and win it, because there's two minutes left on the, on the, the time remaining in this game, and there's only one minute and ten seconds left that he needs to be able to cap. There you go. Sirens off. Now it's getting tense. Lord making his way as quickly as he can down this alleyway. And interestingly enough, he decides to repair his tracks. Um, okay, I, I guess. Will that help? You know, that's one thing that I've just thought to myself here. Does having broken tracks lower the, the track traverse for your tank? Hmm, I've never thought that through. I'm going to have to check that out after this replay, I think, to, to, to figure that one out. Oh my word, mind blown while we're making our way back towards the cap circle here. Now 36 seconds left. It looks like he should be able to make it, but there is quite a lot of area for the Batch at 15555 to be hiding behind. He could be all the way around the corner over here and still be in the cap circle, or alternatively, he could be hiding behind one of two dead tanks in the cap circle, the Panther 88, or alternatively, the T-29. Now 14 seconds left on the game. The Lord of the 69 makes his way up. Wax one into the top of the Bat Chatty on 15555 turret, securing this game and an absolute monster carry. 9,600 damage done, and his pools medal, a certainly impressive feat in a brand new tier 9 auto loading Swedish heavy tank. So Lord unsurprisingly picks up an ace tanker here for 1,956 base experience points. 
Yeah, that's right, Lord is one of those guys who is making it exceedingly tricky to ace the top tier Swedish tanks right now. He also picks up a pools medal for his 10 kills, a defender medal for his 100 base defense points. I think he got probably more than that, all things considered. And a steel wall medal, how much did he manage to block? 3,420, not bad at all. And the high caliber for 9,605 damage, which is tremendous, especially for a tier nine tank. And while Lord had to dip into those premium heat rounds when he ran out of APCR, he still makes 24,000 credits profit. Lord, congratulations to you, what an incredible game showcasing exactly what these high tier Swedish heavy tanks are capable of. And thank you so much for uploading this incredible game on what replays for the community to enjoy. I certainly did and hopefully you guys out there did as well. If you did, please give this video a like. It really helps the channel out. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.